Well, after that, I began to teach on this, and I made some tapes, including a series of three messages called Curses, Cause, and Cure. And these began to circulate, and I began to get remarkable uh, testimonies of what was happening, not just to individuals, but to whole congregations. One of these sets of three tapes found its way to South Africa. And a little later, Ruth and I were there ministering in South Africa. We were in Cape Town, and we encountered a Jewish lady who had met the Lord Jesus and acknowledged him as her Messiah and her Savior. And she told us firsthand this story, and we got it straight from her. She was a, what they call an executive secretary, very highly qualified, and she had a very well-paid job with a man who was the president of his own firm. And after a little while, she discovered that the president and all the executives in the firm were in a strange cult under a lady guru. And then the president asked her if, he, if she would type out some blessings that this guru lady had pronounced on the executives. Well, when this lady began to type them, she realized that they were anything but blessings as far as Christians were concerned. And so she went to her boss and said, I'm sorry, but I don't feel free to type these blessings. The boss was gracious. He said, I'm sorry, if I'd known it was against your conscience, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. That was the end of that. Now we have to supply something by inference. But I am sure that the lady guru heard about this secretary that wouldn't type her blessings. And who knows what she did. She may have prayed or she may have pronounced a curse. But from that source, it really wouldn't make much difference which it was. Within a few weeks, this lady secretary, I'll call her Miriam, it wasn't her name, Miriam's fingers began to go stiff and curl up and set. And in a short while, they were extremely painful and she couldn't bend them. And she said, you wouldn't believe the pain. She had to sleep in a separate bed from her husband because any time her husband turned over and the bed shook, the pain was unendurable in her fingers. She went to a specialist who x-rayed them and said it rheumatoid arthritis. And she was, in a sense, a crippled person. Well, another lady, a charismatic lady, uh, had received these three cassettes of mine and felt that this lady Miriam ought to hear them. I don't think Miriam was really very excited about them. She was a rather sophisticated lady and uh, I think thought of curses was something remote medieval in her eyes. Anyhow, this other lady prevailed, so they sat and listened to the three cassettes. And at the end of the third cassette, I lead people in a prayer by which they release themselves from any curse over their lives. At the point where the prayer began, the cassette jammed. It wouldn't go forward, it wouldn't go back, and it wouldn't eject. <laughs> that is not purely natural. So Miriam said, well, then I can't say the prayer. But the, this indefatigable lady said, oh no, I have the prayer typed out. <laughs> I'll bring that. So she persuaded Miriam, I think rather against her own judgment, to read this prayer. Now you could read the prayer, I would say, in three minutes. It wouldn't take as much as that. So Miriam just dutifully read the prayer. And in between the time she began reading the prayer and the time she finished, her fingers and her hands were totally released. There was no trace of arthritis. She went back to the doctor. He confirmed medically the healing. Now what I want to emphasize is this. She was not praying for healing. It wasn't in her mind. She was simply releasing herself from a curse. But when the curse was broken, there was no more reason for sickness, you see? Another example of the invisible barrier. 